Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com, and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcasting. He is a comic book nerd. In brightest day and darkest night. We can learn a lot from comics. She is a reality TV junkie. No idea. Snooki had her baby. A dollar makes me holla. Chris likes sci-fi. They keep your, they do a brain transplant into this whole new body, but it's you. Kristen likes celebrity gossip. Breaking what do you news. Do? Oh, more breaking it's news. Official. Uh-huh. Official. Before it was just a rumor. Hey, Stu, our pets moved back in together. What do they have in common? Nothing. You're listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. Now, here's Chris and Kristen. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Kristen. Welcome back. And in pod years, feels like we've been gone forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's been mm-hmm. about three weeks, so. Yeah, about two, three weeks. It's probably about three years in podcasts. <laughs> and- Each week is a year. During the break, or if you, it doesn't feel like a break because we still released episodes, but mm-hmm. during the break, I became a man twice. Do, do I dare <laughs> just looking, ask? I'm looking Kristen right in the eyes and I say, I it's, became a man. Not I see once, you have a daughter, twice. so it's not what yeah, I'm thinking. So it's not like you lost, you're not like the 40 year old virgin or anything. So, yeah. Christopher, what happened? For the first time in my life, I did an oil change on okay. my own car. Very uh, Grease Lightning. Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Very John Travolta of you. Danny Zuko, not John. There was a, a girl that told me once, if you don't change the your the oil on your own car, you're a pussy. And she's correct. Oh, wow. We rely on men to do that. But, thankfully, my father or my brother can do it, and they taught me. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I'm used to no, just going no, to the Chris, mechanic. you do it yourself. <laughs> and the, the place is... In the Bronx, where I used to go get mine. Yeah, you could just you pull get, up and say, check my the, oil. and Yeah, you would get the, and they'd do the, the whole car shebang. wash. Yeah. With Lazy, the, uh, that's why. It's because you New Yorkers are spoiled. Yeah. Well, I finally became a man. I was... Um, this is it, ladies. Going down to the city. I, I went down to... We went... Well, you went down to the city once, or you went by the city. But, you know, we had Thanksgiving weekend... I went to my buddy's house, and I mentioned this before, my friend Eddie is a cop in the Bronx, and I went to his house, and they have an older daughter, so they were they gave me a bunch of clothes so I can, for my daughter, yeah. to save, saves me money. So he was like, you're going to earn this stuff that we're giving you, and I'm like, okay. And he goes, you're going to help me. Some sort of hazing going on. <laughs> I don't want the clothes anymore. <laughs> take it back, take it back. And so he's like, oh, you're going to help me change the oil in my car. And I, you know, and both of us are from... Google it. <laughs> you know, both of us are city boys, so I've never done it before. You know, usually you just go to the Dominicans in the Bronx and, yeah, you know, and they somebody... do it for you. And, you know, and it was so simple. Mm-hmm. I didn't yeah, realize. Like I learned. Yeah, you, know? you don't realize until you do. You're like, oh, change the oil. What do I do? And then you realize once you're taught, you're like, oh, yeah, that's it? I've been sweating all this for nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, it's really ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> he has, you know, he has these plastic um ramps that you drive up on okay like, okay line them up and bring and, yeah. and guide me in so i'm there i'm telling him to bring the car and he goes all right now let's get under and i'm like i'm scared and he goes you're the one that lined it up <laughs> so it's not <laughs> you're putting a life in your own hands you should have done it right the first time well i mean it was done right but it is like i've uh, i've never yeah. been under my car it sounds sexy yeah. you ever seen like that um weirdest fetishes or Something like that on like TLC. It was like yeah, weirdest, my weird not fetish, but weird my obsession weird obsession. Yeah, and the guy was in love with his car. Like he was probably in his thirties. He wasn't an old guy. Mm-hmm. I forget what kind of car he had, but always washed it. Um, was under it mm-hmm. and jerking off. Like it went to that level, making out with it, like just kissing it, and like he had to tell his dad on the thing, and he's like, I just don't get it. And it like showed him underneath it, like. Basically, kind of playing with himself, but obviously they didn't show that. Mm-hmm. And he's just like kissing the bumper. It was the weirdest <laughs> thing. That's... So is that what you did when you were under the car? <laughs> no, I just, you know, it's, I, I pop my cherry. It's like it's like put your dick in the tail fumbling. Pie. It's like 
fumbling around with the first pussy you ever yeah. see. You're like, you're like, is it that? what do I do? This what are, goes here. Where this does this right? Go? Oh, okay. An animal. What does that do? You lubricate tell? here. Uh huh. Oh, mm-hmm. this is easy. <laughs> What am I waiting for? What have I been waiting for? The and mystifying nature of it. What's the second thing you did then? Well, no, I... Well, that first, was just the whole thing? First you... I helped him with his oil. Okay. And then uh, we went back down to the city, and this was for us to record mm. um, with the, with Mike and Ming in the Smart Ghost Morning Show. So I was in the city again, and I was so excited from my first time... <laughs> <laughs> It's like a typical like fifteen year old boy after. Yeah, like it's a new toy. It's a new thing I learned. So I told so you're my just buddy. Always changing so oil. I'm like, well, now we're gonna change the oil in my car. And you, you know, run he, a service now out of your driveway. Look what I can do! Look what, look I, can what do. I can do! Like a lemonade stand. It's Chris's oil stand. And he lives. Um, you know, he has. You know, his wife has a car, and his mother in law so comes and visits the kids <laughs> all the time. So there's like three cars in the driveway, and we're over here playing. <laughs> Car, we're playing car, car Tetris. Car to car to car. So I can get my car in the garage. Yeah. And I, you know, like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do the oil. And then, like, we're moving, like, three cars out of the driveway. Mm. Like, you know, let's, Can that's this from here, years of playing Tetris. Help me yeah. figure out how to get everything just so I can get my car in a garage. Cause, you know, it's cold. And that's the one thing is that I don't have a garage. I have a driveway. And I'm like, I could do it in the driveway, but it's, but it's cold. cold. <laughs> I'm looking for the Dominicans. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's... Um, proud of you, Chris. I feel... I am proud of you. It took me this long, great. but I feel like a man. I mean, that- when that girl said, you don't change the oil in your own car, you're a pussy. Like, you know, I, now I, I can finally... I would like to be with somebody who could do that. That would be a good man quality to have. Yeah, I just... Like, oh, my I car is acting learned. up. I think I need oil. Could you do it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be kind of pussy-ish if he was like, eh, I'll take it up to the mechanic. <laughs> Yeah. For I've, the oil. You know, I just never learned. I yeah, never learned, and now learn, I know I learned. Like, oh, that was it? Yeah. Yeah, it's real stupid. Because so once I learned, now. I was like, oh, and then, anybody <laughs> could do this. <laughs> and then he goes, uh, the next lesson, changing your spark plugs. Here we so go. That's the- <laughs> um, I had to watch, I had to get mine changed once, and I had to watch the mechanic do it, because my dad's just like, he's telling me, he's like, make sure they do it right. I'm like, I don't know what I'm <laughs> What I'm looking for, but I'll watch. Yeah, and I'll they could put rubber bands and duct tape. I don't yeah. know if they're doing it right. <laughs> what he put in there looked like a spark plug, Dad. I'm not sure. And the car ran after, so <laughs> well, all is good. Yeah, that's. Um, I so- had the pleasure. Well, Lindsay Lohan's been in the news, of course, mm-hmm. the last couple of weeks. Um, Liz and Dick was her Lifetime movie. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I saw. I, it. I had the pleasure of watching it last night. Mm-hmm. Horrible. Horrible. I mean, it was bad. This was supposed to be her comeback. This right. Was... And that they shouldn't have portrayed it as her comeback. <laughs> it was really bad. Like, people were saying it was bad, and I was like, you know, like, how she's an actress. How bad could it really be? Mm. It was bad. Now, was it bad because of her acting? I think, yeah, or, her. Oh, because definitely her Newby, acting. Because Nighttime right. movies are, in her t- are known. Yeah, you're not expecting the best of the best. Mm-hmm. But no, this was, her acting was terrible. Mm-hmm. Um... Like, her accent would come and go, and then we're like, is she supposed to have an accent? Like, you didn't really know. <laughs> and even the main guy, I'm not sure who he was. Dick. <laughs> yeah, Dick. Um, who she called throughout the thing, Richard, so should have been Liz and Richard. <laughs> yeah, it just... But, um, like, his... Okay, I don't... I still don't... I didn't look it up or anything. I don't know, because his brother was fr- had an Irish accent, because mm-hmm. his brother was president. In it. But Dick's accent was like more english like they didn't match as brothers <laughs> and it was like we because all of a sudden the other one started talking irish and i was like they're brothers <laughs> like i thought it was like his manager at one point mm-hmm. just real st- like there were scenes where she had to get like emotional like kind of punch him in the stomach they were the puniest punches like it looked so so ridiculous mm-hmm. like and eh, like like your daughter hitting me like mm-hmm. that <laughs> and she had to, like, there were scenes where she had to, like, throw stuff, and it was just, like, so half-assed. And mm-hmm. I was like, really? Wow. Like, you have to break stuff right now. Let's put some oomph into it. And just her acting was, it was bad. Now, it, you don't think it was on purpose bad? Was she trying, does it look like she was trying? It, what, they weren't trying to go for it's so bad, it's good kind of a deal? I was have she trying? no, I, no, I, my impression was she was trying. Okay. She was trying to be All like right. Liz Taylor, and 
just just, being fucked up. Yeah, it was not good. And then at the end, I mean, it's supposed to be like a sad ending because he dies, whatever, and she finds out she's got to go to the tombstone. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's supposed to be a sad scene. She's crying. I mean, I was laughing. Me and my friends were laughing (laughs) because at this point, it's all of a sudden she's so much older and her hair is like kind of crazy, whatever, like has gray in it because she's older, Mm -hmm. but her face is still the same, like a 20-year-old face Yeah. with this, so we're like, they could put wrinkles on her or anything, like nothing, and it was like... (laughs) Just well, the only thing that looks old on, on her is her hair, and that's the wig. Oh, boy. <laughs> it was, it looked so ridiculous. Like, I couldn't stop laughing because <laughs> it was just like this Botox face with no, like, wrinkles or anything. <laughs> the high cheekbones yeah, and Yeah, she's duck supposed to be like lips. 60 or something, and it's like, you're telling me Liz Taylor had that perfect skin? <laughs> but, but it was so ridiculous. I mean, it was just all around bad. Wow. Um, and I really wanted it to work. I, yeah. I'm rooting for You're, her. <laughs> you thought this um, was going to be like the John Travolta type of comeback, right. like John and Travolta in uh, was, Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And it was, uh, sorry. And it was so it's such a boring story. Oh, okay. Because it was just like their relationship. She got married to him twice. Well, divorced twice and then, you know, remarried. Mm-hmm. Um, they, that was like her longest relationship with, was with him. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was just all about them, like always having sex sort of thing. And mm-hmm. like, there was no relation. Like it was so bad. Yeah. Cause Liz Taylor was one of those, like she was like married like eight times. She was married seven times, seven divorced times. eight because she divorced him twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We looked that up. That's when you, I know it's like, you don't learn from your and own I think mistakes. she was with him for like 12 years. That was like the longest one of them. I forget. Cause we looked up, we're like, who the hell was she with? Mm-hmm. And it was like one, like she got married and divorced and then married again, like all in like a year. We're like, how does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> like what? But I mean, the story was just so boring. They were just always like in different locations. Like they traveled all around the world mm-hmm. and it was like, okay, but we're in a different scene, but it's still the same. You guys are just making out and having, oh. having trouble with alcohol and like <laughs> It was just, so, and it was so ridiculous, just the acting. So she was playing an, she was playing a person with alcohol problems. Basically, and I was like, this is perfect for her. Why isn't she doing better? <laughs> Method then, acting. Oh my god, it was. She so could have pulled the Shia LaBeouf with she all these totally problems. She could have. And, I'm just um, getting caught in a moment. Yeah, and then I guess later on, like last oh, week. No. Last week, she punched somebody in New York City. Yeah. The face... And the best is... Michael Zapsik uh, told us Yeah, about he, he gave me the breaking news, and then, of course, I had to look it up. Um, so she was, like, at a club, whatever, and the best is, is that the person said to her, Liz and Dick sucks. <laughs> oh, so that was... I thought he was making... <laughs> so did I, and that's why I had to look it up. Uh-huh. And um, I agree with that person. I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Lindsay, if you don't agree. But the critics have spoken. Wow. And she's, go she's throwing her. she's throwing punches at yeah, people. She's passionate. Oh boy. We got baby problems. Now would she would she do the same thing if like it was uh someone said Herbie fully loaded sucks? <laughs> well I think the issue is is what people are saying, sources. Mm-hmm. And her father, of course, that she's just on Coke all the time. Oh, so okay. maybe she was just all up hopped up on Coke and just angry and just punch someone. <laughs> I mean, I, like, I do, I love you, Lens. I wish, you know, you were back to the mean girls, Lens. I mean, that could have been me, that person. Yeah. Because I would have said, Liz and Dick sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I could, and then, of course, I would sue, and then, there we go from there. But, I read today, Lindsay again in the news. Again? Jesus. Well, A, she might be, we've already talked about I this, where she thing. might go to jail for the holidays. She might be in jail by Oh, well, then. I thought because since they had her, her. <laughs> huh? she's already in custody. <laughs> Oh, oh, by the I way, what we hope you... Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Know. Like, she might be in jail soon. Who knows? But she didn't pay her 2011 taxes. No oh boy. This girl's got money, drug problems, and I love it. Did she it. even work in 2011? I know. <laughs> yeah, what did she do? My check. Liz and Dick? <laughs> I think well, she might have done... Liz Dick was 2012 for, machete. like, a week. What? I think she might have done Machete in, like, 2011. Yeah. <laughs> she probably did some modeling stuff, too, just to get by. And we're back. Sorry, technical difficulties. Hey, yo. I believe my daughter just said, what the fuck is that? Mm-hmm. No, it's and- pretty clear she did say that. It's pretty- <laughs> she says some things that, you know, you could maybe figure out, but that was clear. Yeah. <laughs> In her little high-pitched voice. But that was, was she pointing funny. at something or just... She had maybe a... she was looking at you saying, had- what the fuck is that? <laughs> It was a little plastic tube. No, she was pointing at you. That's what I saw. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> what oh. the hell? And that's one thing is that I know I don't have the cleanest mouth in the world, you know. <laughs> and we go to social situations, especially now with Thanksgiving just passed, and you see family and you see friends. Give me the fucking mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, uh, yeah, when she goes, like, Give me she'll, my fucking she'll, baba. Her, her thing she's gotten from me is what the fuck. <laughs> and obviously, <laughs> whenever I say what the fuck, it's not, I'm saying it because I'm surprised about something. Right. I'm not, like, I'm not saying Angry. to her what the yeah. fuck, you know. <laughs> so you see something, well, she throws her arms. I think you said it when you, when you take, changed her diaper. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is that? No. <laughs> like, what the fuck what is in that diaper? Voice. What the fuck? Yeah, it was all, just out of nowhere, all of a sudden that was sad. <laughs> oh, gotta yeah. love the innocence. Yeah. And um so with being away from the computer, like I have notes from like two weeks ago. Um did yeah, you see uh and I only saw the clip, I didn't watch the show. Uh uh Psy, the guy who did Gangnam style All right. and MC Hammer. No. Yeah. It was MC the American making movie, some money? The American <laughs> Music Awards. Oh, okay. And he comes out and starts doing Gangnam, Gangnam style. style. And of course, you know Can't touch this. Well over half a half a billion views and I think I think they're expecting like a billion views by like um by the end of this month they'll be it'll hit you wow. know at the rate that it's going it'll be or it'll be a billion views. And she's back in the news. And he did so he starts singing it and then like everything stops. Now uh uh Cy, yeah. that's his name. He's wearing MC Hammer pants. He's Hammer wearing Hammer. those style of, yeah. of genie pants and when like the music stops like pew, you know, then it turns into like a, you know, the lights turn on behind it and you see smoke and then you hear like, stop, have a time. <laughs> and, How ridiculous. And MC Hammer comes out, you know, full. How does he look? Um, good. He was dancing his ass off. So between MC Hammer's it. traditional, like, dance yeah. that he's known for, like the, the crab side man step or something. And, What's it yeah. called? I, it's if it has like, a name. You know, the, the, yeah, it looks I, like a crab going yeah, sideways. Yeah, it's like the crab walk or something ridiculous. And crab something. So that mixed with Gangnam Style. So you know, no MC Hammer. It, they were kind of mashing it up at the show, making a little mix of the two. You know, and he was dancing his ass off. He Probably was had like, like a heart attack after. Oh my god! You know, it's, <laughs> it's like it brought me back to being a to little the good kid. old it MC me back Hammer to days. Ninety one, ninety two. You know, I, I. I I had a childlike smile on my face. I'm like <laughs> so yeah. excited. <laughs> you know. Now, did you see? I, I the only performance I saw just because people were talking about it from the AMAs was Pink's performance. Okay. It was. I mean, the girl's just straight muscle is basically what it was. Like mm-hmm. her and this guy dancing, and she's singing the whole time. But just like the dance moves, like I can't even explain. It. You have to watch it. It's like. At one point, she's just, like, lifting him. Like, it's a jacked guy, mm-hmm. obviously. Like, lifting him with, like... Like, holding him up by, like, she's kind of bending back and he's on her legs. And mm-hmm. she's holding him, like, in midair, kind of doing a Matrix thing, oh. and just singing. It was like, holy shit! <laughs> like, they were just doing kind of, so you think you can dance type of dances. But it was... I mean, they were both just straight muscle. It was like, wow. I've seen, um, when she's done, where, like, those performers, like, Cirque du Soleil, like, Oh, yeah, no, from... this was so much better. This was, like, I don't even know. Like, she's just straight... <laughs> I don't even know what the type of dance you would call it. Mm-hmm. But, like, she's muscle. Like, not a... She's built like a man. <laughs> yeah, she's... Not an ounce of body fat on her. When you like, listen to lyrics girl. to her music, the girl's got fucking issues, but... Well, of course. <laughs> don't, don't we all? <laughs> I think, well, yeah, you know, no, she, that was, like, she, I think she... I know it's gonna sound weird. She's like, I think she has like a weird, like low self esteem. So she's like, I have to be better than the other up. pops performers. Oh, by yeah. well, she used to go against um, Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera, and then yeah. the now music both, execs wanted to be wanted her to be like them, and she was like, no. <laughs> judges on yeah, now they're just talented. fat and and so is and just fat and uh, just yeah, just divorced <laughs> and, <laughs> and talent. Or, yeah, the judges on X Factor and The Voice. <laughs> so that was... It was uh, Brittany's birthday the other day. Oh, I think it was Brittany's December 2nd, girl. yesterday. She's made it to 31. Nobody thought that was going to happen a few years ago. Wow. We're proud of you, Brett. Keep up the great work. <laughs> no, she's done She's done a song recently with Will I Am. Yeah, I just saw, like, a, like a snapshot of it. Like, her. I didn't, like, hear it, though. Now, Will I Am, now he has this thing where he's wearing a baseball cap. Mm-hmm. Okay, now imagine not the brim of the hat, not the part that sticks out, the flat part where you would usually see like a baseball team logo or All something right, so like that. So on the back of it? Well, you know, on the on the front. Yeah, but he had it on the front. So the back of the hat on the front? Well, no, I mean, he was actually, unlike most other people, he was actually wearing the hat the right way. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but not the brim, the the part that's over your forehead oh okay so not the brim right above that that part like i said where a logo logo would go he has 
a strap or something that's holding his iPhone. <laughs> okay. So it's like the iPhone <laughs> is now part of, yeah, okay. it's like an iPhone holder made out of a baseball hat. All right. And I had saw him at some, I forgot where I saw him at where he was wearing that hat. And now there's actually a commercial for uh the Beats headphones. Yeah, I saw that. And in the commercial, he's wearing it. He's wearing I'll it. Have to look for that. I didn't. And I really it. had to look hard. Now, what he did was, I think he has like a, I it looks like an iPhone, but like with a gold case on it, or or Pla- yellow <laughs> metal case. You know, maybe you know, assuming that it's gold, but it does, it is twenty four karat. I'm yeah. sure it's. Oh yeah, with him, I'm pretty sure oh, yeah. the money he makes it probably is well, that's real gold. Cool. But you're putting now. You don't like it? It's, You're not into that? I know in hip hop culture. I mean, we all have pockets and stuff. It's kind of stupid. Like, it's pointless. Yeah, but I mean, it's, like, it's when guys. It's Will I Am. It's when, unique. Yeah, like, it's, it's a I'm technological. Because, <laughs> you know, like, most guys in hip hop, they brag about their jewelry is very expensive. Yeah. You know, very expensive. This guy's putting his iPhone on his yeah. head <laughs> for the world to see. Yeah. But it, it's kind of strapped in, though. Like, well, what, yeah, it's got to be secure. What would be cool is if it was something that held the iPhone or you can see the screen. What, you want a big thing in front of your face? Yeah, like it's like a display <laughs> on his head. We are getting lazy you know as Americans. <laughs> well, no, I mean... We don't need that hat to text for us. How cool would that be that... In front of my face at all times. Yeah, like... It just but has, like, like a visual forward, so, of what's in front of me, so, like, it has, like, a yeah. map of what's in front of me, so... So it would be one, look. he could FaceTime, yeah. you know, on, our, on iPhones. Perfect. So, like, you could go to whatever, like... Go to Will I Am's website or something and see what he's seeing off the top of his head, like a hat cam. But then, you know, or at least like put some cool app on it where it makes designs, like a hat that's changing colors right. or a hat that's, yeah, you like know, just, you know, like, you know, flashes or says, you know, watch, listen, download my album or whatever. And bitch. And then just plus, bitch. I mean, and nowadays with people worried about cell phones giving them brain cancer, cancer yeah, and stuff like that. that now you're gonna purposely strap I'm a foam gonna, to your right, head. Right to the, you know, the only thing in between is like a little piece of bone. Cotton, yeah. <laughs> little piece of There's, bone and, know, uh, what's so it? So please keep an eye on Will I Am and see. Yeah. <laughs> You know, when he's going in for cat scans. Bad like, enough with the Bluetooth. Did you strap a phone wanted? to your forehead? Because <laughs> there's cancer right in this yeah. region, right in that forehead. Right in your frontal lobe. Anything happen? Anything hit your head? Any- no, I just strapped my iPhone there. <laughs> But yeah, so that's his. I gotta look like, for that now in the commercial. Yeah, it's because I saw it. It's in stuff. that hip hop culture got, yeah. to to wear expensive stuff. So why not make it a little practical and technological? Right. Like, oh yeah, here's my iPhone, my gold case iPhone. Now girls are gonna get like it right, strapped right across their boobs. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would get in that like an app with like a nipple here, a nipple there, just walk, just walk <laughs> down the street. I got two phones. <laughs> it's like. I don't know. It's different. Yeah. It's different, different would be the word. I just, I th- honestly think it, it should be the other way around where you could see the middle where, you know, you put up an app or something. I mean, you know, the culture is so wasteful anyway. Well, can anyway. you just flip it around the phone? Well, no, it's not the back of the case. It's the front of the case, but the oh. strap is going over where the screen would be. Okay. You so know, it's going up that way. More yeah, more I would more have more. I would have the straps cover the edges. Yeah, I see. where the middle part is so you free. Can see the screen. I didn't, so then, I just know, thought it kind of went. You know, over you can see like Angry Birds across his head know, or Stitcher. Or, <laughs> <laughs> the Stitcher app. Right, you know, the Stitcher app. Will I am is listening to Two Strangers Holy on the podcast. Shit. <laughs> Love you, Will. Fucking awesome. You know, see our logo across his head. Now, I just read, I actually, when I was just looking up stuff, five worst sex moves. Would you like to know? Five worst sex mm-hmm. moves. And I think it's more geared toward, because the guy always gets off, so it's more geared towards the women Five and worst their sex pleasure. moves for women. Now, we haven't gone over this list yet. Um, what do you think number one is? Well, it went one through five, so I don't know if it was rating it or if it's just given the top five. Uh-huh. So, um, well, number one that they have down. Well, I don't know. Let's start at one. Um, yeah, just, okay, any of them. The wheelbarrow. That's not on the list. No, it's not. <laughs> um... Wow, I'm really bracking my brain because... They're pretty common, all of them. Yeah. Um, okay, let's start at number five. What's number five? Uh, number five is 69. Wow. It is, and the reason is, is because people are too preoccupied. 
Yeah, you, you can't too, focus on getting your pleasure you because you're worried about pleasuring him, him. You're worried about pleasuring her. So the best thing they say, because it also gives you how to fix it, uh-huh. the best thing they say is to just go on and off, switch. Don't do it at the same time. Uh, so basically, just oral for both. No sixty nine. You go, tag me in, <laughs> tag me in, bro. Um, no, tag me in. <laughs> Because you know, you're too preoccupied with pleasuring the other person, you're not enjoying yourself. This isn't, and I'm not uh, being like macho bragging. I, <laughs> I've never, I've either had some. I don't, I don't think all of those women could be generous, <laughs> like to please my ego and. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, yeah. That's never been a problem. That's why I'm trying to think of what moves are bad, and I've mm-hmm. 69 has never been one of them. Okay. <laughs> like I said, the guys always get pleasure. <laughs> Yeah, well, you could, you could. We're focusing on the women here, Chris. Well, the no, women. no, but I'm saying it's not the women. It is now. The one thing about 69 is that um, if you're a clit man, you have to now understand that it's upside one. down. Yeah. The, the hood is on the bottom now, and that's hard um, to, you know. Well, it's not hard for hard. a man to all of a sudden switch it up. It's not hard. Shit. It's, it's I mean, on the bottom. <laughs> no, but I'm still saying. I mean, it's not you hard. You have to adjust. It's, you have to adjust, and once you. Once you realize a specific technique, now suddenly you got to change yeah. it. Uh oh. Yeah, See, but that's I've, you know that's the that's the difference between a male's mind and a female's. For mind. some reason, I'm thinking of that scene in the first Spider-Man movie where Kirsten Dunst and you know uh, <laughs> Tobey Maguire's upside down hanging yeah, and they have to yeah, kiss and upside down. Like uh, that's so, what you thought of for season nine. Yes, so now you're <laughs> it always down. it always goes back to it's Spider-Man. A different set of lips, way. but you know, hey, yeah, a lips a lip. Okay, We're so all what's Libya. number four? Number four is your traditional missionary, and the reason is mm-hmm. is because it doesn't hit the right spot. Yeah, I can see for women. Yeah, I missionaries... mean it works, but it's not in the right spots. You'll feel good. As a yeah, woman, missionary is that not. traditional so guy. So to fix it, yeah. So like, to fix it is to more you either put something under your hips or whatever, but you lift your hips up more, mm-hmm. and I guess you would anyways, guy, yeah. but bend your legs, and that's it. Just have your hips up more at an angle, coming mm-hmm. up a little bit. That I get. I that mean, would, that's missionary is angle. the that's boring. That's like boring white bread. Sex. That's like nun sex, like church sex or something. Yeah, the missionary, like what they mm. teach. This is the only acceptable That's probably how it got the name. Um, another one, what do you think? Another you have no one. idea, any of them? They're all pretty simple. Well, like, missionary makes names. sense. I don't know why missionary didn't. I mean, the other, you know, ones that I think women would like, reverse cowgirl. Okay, that like. is a no. Number three. And the reason is it's hard for a woman to climax. But because that's the if you're at a different well, angle, yeah. and it all depends on the male's penis. Uh-huh. If it has a curvature, it can work. <laughs> yeah, that's it's. So it's it's harder for girls to climax. In now that that's position. number three. Because, yep, because you're in a different. Things don't align up right. Okay, yeah, it is the whole thing. It's just harder to climax. I, it's just you can climax. It's just harder. Once again, I've never had that problem. That's why. Because <laughs> that's a good thing that ladies call Chris. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, because the two I ever did. because the reverse cowgirl, the woman can control the depth and the and the speed and the, and the. It's just that things don't line up right, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I guess yeah. it depends more on the penis shape. Yeah, and um, that's about it because <laughs> it just okay. said things don't align up as they should. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's number two? The women on top. Woman on so cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just regular cow rodeo, regular cowgirl. <laughs> And the reason is, is insecurity. Women feel more oh, security, how their belly looks, how their boobs look, and they're focused more on that rather than what's going see, on. See, that's, that is, see, that's one of those things. That's the difference between, that's a, between a, male a man and a woman because. A male doesn't give a shit. Women He's are like, worried about, Buddhist. like, being on their back because they're worried about their boobs flapping to the side or we're they're, sorry, they're, they're, we're sorry we have feelings. Well, no. <laughs> no, it's just more insecurity. If you're with so. the guy, you know, and, I, you know, what's the best way to put it? A guy is into... I don't know. Right, maybe because, into maybe women who date assholes. Right. You know when a guy is into you, a guy likes every bit of you. But you as know, females, it's not, you know, we get a little insecure, like, oh, I yeah. gained weight here. And then, it is... The guy could be the nicest guy, but you yourself might just be like, yeah. or you, I don't or the like that. catty you know? friends or whatever exactly. make you feel bad about something. And just like, insecurity with that one. Not that it's hard to climax or anything, just you're more focused on how you look. And worry about your boobs hanging in his right, face. And those little saggy titters. Number uno. It better not be doggy style. It is doggy style. Oh, God. And the reason is, it is painful. 
It's at a, it's a lot of thrusting and it's painful on the clitoris and it's less intimate, which females like the intimate oh, and it's God. harder to stay lubricated. So the best way what to fix it. What the fuck are these women? These are know. women with, I don't know. So I'm the sorry. best way to fix it is instead of, cause you know, sometimes a guy comes out a little bit and you gotta thrust it back in. Mm. Best way is to have do her short, back it in. deep. Oh. Have her back it in. Yeah. Short, that's... deep. Thrust, I guess. Short, short deep, deep thrust. Yeah. Instead of doing a short deep kind of like you know. instead <laughs> of doing like uh we gotta go all the way out and in, out and in. Who the, who the fuck fucks like that? <laughs> what? Whoever, <laughs> whoever did this survey, I don't know. And it's harder for a female. I think the, the women who write these articles are it was on, like, fucking the wrong man. I don't know who they um interviewed, it didn't say. You know what you And that was that. Fuck fat guys, ladies. That's uh That's how you gotta do it. <laughs> that's gotta do. Because um, it's 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 like when you have when sometimes the more the more attractive women like they're in bed and they're like a fucking cold fish. Yeah, like it's later. your job to do anything. That's what I'm saying. I'm and, lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and okay. and so, uh, you know, saying and it's like you know that's, that's what I'm saying, their... guys. Go after the ugly girls. They know what to do. <laughs> so. These women must be fucking. Yes, yeah, so I don't. Yeah, it didn't say who like, they did men. the survey on or mm. what happened there. All right, just so, so you all know, guys or girls like more intimate sex, not the here's my ass, go go to town. I'll face, <laughs> I'll face this way and have my head in a pillow. Well, so we can watch, watch both watch the Daily Show. Yeah, exactly. Come on. Exhaust that isn't sexy. <laughs> Although there are those freak girls, you gotta know what your girl likes, mm-hmm. basically, I guess. There are all those people that do like it. So let's take a um, quick break. Yeah, we, we right shall. Back. And now, a word from our sponsor. Hello, listeners. This is Chris from Two Strangers, One Podcast, but I'd like to announce that we are now part of Livin' Lane Podcast Entertainment. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Livin' Lane Podcast Entertainment. L-I-V-I-N. L-A-M-E Podcast Entertainment. Along with Two Strangers One Podcast, there are a bunch of brand new shows to choose from. There's The Breakdown with Filthy Phil, Shane O'Mac, and Cord bringing you the latest news in the music world. Join Joe and Carrie Fox in the Fox Den for your fix of astrology, numerology, and nature. Get your movie and television news with The Real Chat Podcast. And the big daddy that started it all, Live in Lane. So check out the Facebook for information on new episodes and updates at www.facebook.com backslash live and lame podcast entertainment. Click and Hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. You can leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click the letter N hit.com. That's clickandhit.com. And now for listeners of Two Strangers One Podcast, you can use promo code STRANGERS and receive 10% off your purchase at clickandhit.com. That's promo code STRANGERS for 10% off your purchase. And we now return to Two Strangers One Podcast. And we're back. Um, okay, so we were talking about... Yeah, I mean, because I guess, okay, the fr- the top two of that sex list were more emotional because of the woman. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because when you have, like, low down, dirty animal fucking sex, Ew, you know. It sounds awful. <laughs> Why did, it's low it's, down, it's, dirty it's, animal oh, sex. Nah, I mean, you fucking, you, your brain goes into that, your brain switches, like, and you, you, you're not even. Uh, I can say when I get text, my brain doesn't switch. Therefore, another difference between male and, men and women. <laughs> yeah, man. Because, you know, I mean, not that... Uh, I understand the intimacy you doggy style, but, like, women like... I mean, I don't know. I My own personal experience mm-hmm. with my ex doing doggy style, I, I of course it felt right. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I felt like an animal. I'm facing this that's way. That's the best part. <laughs> I'm not into that. that's why we're worried. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I am not into Agreed that. Agree to disagree. Like, yeah, it all worked, but I feel like an idiot at the end. Like, I'm facing this way. 
like head in a pill, you know, and it's like, I lo- I, I it's like, know, ooh, this part. is hot. <laughs> when you like, afterwards, me more you're like that. waking up like, holy shit, what the fuck happened? I didn't grow up <laughs> on a farm, I'm not into it, I'm not into it. Wow. That's the um, difference. Guys are just like, yeah, yeah, I can ride you, yeah, to me, that's and a- uh, I'm going to get off on this, and um, <laughs> I don't care if you don't get off, this is what I'm doing. That's great. Um, uh, that might be why our relationship didn't work out, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> Kate Middleton, we're going to have a royal baby. Oh, boy. Can you imagine that pregnancy? So They're the going to have like, jewels. cameras in, in the labor unit. Yeah. that's First glimpse of the royal baby. <laughs> What if it's going to be bald like I mean, the husband there? They're straight up celebrities now. Yeah. They're not, you know, like, today's royalty right, is no different than Brad the good old-fashioned American mm-hmm. celebrities. You know, they're, they're, the celebrities are American royalty. Yep, you absolutely. Know, so, uh, We're such losers. The, you here. know, they're going to be all over <laughs> the, 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 the tabloids and the pictures and, mm-hmm. you know, the deals, like, you know... You know Billions of dollars. I was gonna say, I wonder how much money is gonna go to the first picture of you know. Yeah. Like, and since the royal family, you know, their money isn't. I mean, it's still the money. Their money isn't the way it used to be. Mm-hmm. Right. So they're gonna they're gonna have like an exclusive, probably the Inquirer, probably for you know millions of dollars. Some it's gonna be like twenty million dollars or something. It's gonna like that be for like it's such a ridiculous amount that it's like this is what we're spending money on. And, and, and you and know what? Sells. And the housewives are gonna run out and buy it. <laughs> no, oh, absolutely. I want to see Kate Middleton's because I mean it's a baby. The, Let the baby live, yo. <laughs> <laughs> the now the one that she's married to is he's a, is he the good looking one? Mm-mm. She's married to the bald one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. He's the older one. So the looking one's just single. I think now he's single. I don't know after the weenie. That was scandal. the one doing the nude. Yeah, bo- he's uh, living uh, life and he's doing what he should be doing. He's living a celebrity's a life yeah. in Las Vegas. I don't blame him. Playing Play your naked life. pool with women in a penthouse. Mm-hmm. That one, he's living the, the American celebrity dream. <laughs> yeah, why so not? So the ugly one, but she's The ugly hot. bald one. Yeah, ugly, she's bald gorgeous. One. So and her sister's gorgeous. They're going to have a good looking kid. Because when good looking people and ugly bald, people. be bald like the husband coming out? Uh, let's or hope fu- not. <laughs> or fully as Thankfully, my head. daughter has a beautiful head of hair. <laughs> <I'm> gonna, <laughs> you know, thank goodness for her like Native American genetics because, um, you know, don't, she doesn't end up like me. And so. Yeah, I think we'll have. They have a girl. I'd like uh, them to a have a girl. Good looking look like a good-looking person and ugly person have a baby, it's usually a good-looking baby. Yeah. What sucks is when there's two good-looking couples. And, and they have an ugly love. baby. And that's what usually, in my in my uh, experience, two good-looking people make an ugly baby. Yeah. Ugly, so all you good-looking people. Two ugly people can make, can make a pretty can baby. Can make a pretty, yeah, yeah, decent baby. And ugly and pretty usually makes a pretty baby. Usually it's, it does a good mix. It's like when you took science class and you had, like, the white flower, the white flower and the red They're flower. Fine. Sometimes they make We're a pink flower. Make this Sometimes they, flower. <laughs> or is that little? Great. Is that little? It's like four boxes. <laughs> yeah. What can we do? What can we match together? White, red, red, white, <laughs> right, white, red, red. So yeah. So yeah, they're, and they're probably gonna have the royal pregnancy. A good-looking kid. They're gonna have an E True Hollywood special or something. You know that. Oh boy, Their to, life to be that to sperm. <laughs> that sperm. <laughs> to you're, be that you're, sperm. You're blessed from day one. Oh. You're blessed from. You're not even. Uh, they're gonna have a tiara or a crown from day one. Yeah, and you're gonna. I mean, well, I guess that sucks. I mean, that sucks. But you know, you are born into the public eye. Like you know, you're, right. that kid's never gonna have a normal life. But then again, you know, I don't know. Then we can. <laughs> I kind of like to have the baby's life right now. Uh, let's now, see. What do you we got? had just, um, the world is just coming down from Twilight Madness. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard from friends of mine that have seen it. They said it's the best one. They said, okay. Yeah. And I believe, I don't know, I think it was number two this weekend, just because Skyfall came out. Oh, I was going to say, what else came out? And, and, Skyfall. And, Skyfall, it was real good. Yeah. It, uh, um, from what I'm hearing, like, I'm hearing people really going, I, I went to go see it again. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's I like, knew people saw it twice. I was like, really? You went twice? And in this day and age... To go twice, Where please. stuff comes out on DVD three yeah. months later and stuff like that, for people to go back, you know. So, I'm hearing good things. I, I cannot... I haven't seen any of the new James Bond, the ones with... Uh, the new guy. What's Daniel his Craig. Name? Daniel Craig. I haven't seen any of them. Oh, those, yeah. I was kind of turned off because... I know they're going in a direction of like the born identity. Yeah, yeah. But apparently, like all these it? people are saying that Daniel Craig is the best Bond ever. Yeah. And you know, I'm a 
call me, call me a, a victim of my time. I'm a Pierce Brosnan man. <laughs> you know, like everybody has their they're, James they're Bond. Bond yeah. And maybe it's because um, those are the first movies to appeal to me, you know, with, when, with my demographic. Like, of course, growing up as a kid, there were always James Bond movies on yeah. basic cable and stuff like that. So, you know, I've seen the the Roger Moores, the Sean Connerys, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But All to me, them, Pierce Brosnan is your guy. Is my Like, so Daniel, Daniel Craig, Craig might is... Be mine. It's, yeah, exactly. Daniel Craig is your generation's... Bond. My Bond. <laughs> Pierce my Brosnan Bond, is my, and you know I I could still see Pierce Brosnan playing. Yeah, he's like Bond. one of those that ages well, and yeah, I, he still kind of looks the same. And not to say not to take anything away from Daniel Craig because I haven't it. seen the movies yet. <laughs> so who knows? I may get a man crush on Daniel on Craig. Daniel Craig. We'll see what <laughs> but happens. everyone's saying yeah that. So yeah, I, I heard guess it's been really good. I, I guess I'm happy for him yeah. that people are, are digging Respond, the movies. Yeah, because it could you know. go either way. You know, I was, sucks, you're you know, and it's not shit. his fault, but I am. I was still kind of pissed with the whole uh, Heineken, Heineken endorsement. I guess that like kind of faded because the movie was good because you didn't hear anything about yeah, that. Yeah, nobody's know? making a big deal. Yeah, um, you know, actually, for me to like an Adele song, <laughs> yeah, that song's so cool, isn't it? Yeah. Now. A movie that didn't do well. I actually heard it on the radio and I read it, so I guess it really did suck. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brad Pitt's new movie, Killing Them Softly. Um, it was a shitty movie. Yeah. Critics gave it an F. Well, I mean, uh, just just my keep in my mind. No, because so Brad Pitt now is doing World War Z. Yep, That's his that next. One. That um, one hasn't come out yet. No, it hasn't come out right. yet. Um, now that. The books, and I mentioned this in the past episode, uh, was written by Max Brooks. Mm hmm. Who I didn't, I didn't even realize he has he has a third zombie book that has come out. Okay, I forgot the name of it, but you know the two that I read was the Zombie Survival Guide, which reads like a straight Survival up manual, guy. and then World War Z, which is about a guy after the war interviewing people about the zombie apocalypse. But I mean, from different points of view, from, yeah, from an economical point of view, right, from yeah, a military point of view, that. from you know different people around the world, and he, he there I saw a third one. But I just found this out, and this is so, like, for someone who should have his finger on the pulse. Do you know who Max Brooks's father is? Mm-mm. Can you think of any other famous Brooks? Mel or Mel oh, Brooks? Right? That's his name. Mel Brooks is his father. Wow, I love Mel Brooks, and that's because Mel Brooks now is promoting a box set. Okay, uh, Mel for, Brooks, like just a career next? retrospective, and I it's, love it has Mel like Brooks. old movies and stuff like yeah. that. And he was being interviewed, actually, and I was listening to, you know, the the Nerdist podcast, Chris mm-hmm. Hardwick's podcast. And he goes, yeah, my son Max, and oh yeah, my son has a movie coming out, and, and I'm like, wow. And Apple doesn't I, fall too far from the tree. Yeah. and That's cool. Th- now, the books take zombies very seriously. It's a, like, it's it not a, a parody. It's a subject. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just saying is, you know, it, w- it would have yeah, been so easy like to a, make it yeah. a joke. And yes, it is a joke because it's something Taking taken it so seriously. seriously. Yeah, uh, it, you know, I guess well, it's maybe like this he's following his this was... father's footsteps, where yeah. looking at the world at like a skewed a angle, point yeah. of view. The books are awesome. Cool. Yeah. And I had, you know, I didn't come into those books knowing that that's Ma- that's Mel Brooks's right. son. And then you find out later that's cool. Yeah. So the guy has talent. He's he's you know he he's earned every penny. You know, because some people have the parents' name. Yeah, and then it's and like the nepotism. Well, you're and just like, writing on his. Yeah, you're just you know. No, that's, that's cool that he's as talented as his yeah, it's father. Good that's always. And you know, and I'm I'm glad that you know I'm you know I'm glad that he doesn't make a big deal out of it. You yeah. know, like he's not like oh well, my dad. Well, Mel Brooks, Brooks is like he's a grown ass man, right? It's not like a teenager trying to make yeah. money in Hollywood. So or that's cool that he's doing like his own thing. Like it's mm-hmm. totally different, but. Yes, yeah, not so writing on his. Dance. I did not know that. And for our listeners, uh, the guy, the person who technically wrote World War Z, or at least wrote the book that World War Z is based on, is Mel Brooks's <laughs> dad. <laughs> you know, the same guy that gave us, you know, you know Frankenstein, son. Spaceballs, Blazing Saddles. It just I, when I found that oh, out, I was best. surprised. Yeah. You know, Brooks is Brooks is a relatively common name, so I'm like, I didn't know those. Have two. you ever seen him, Max? No, I've never seen a picture. Say, of I wonder him. if he looks like him. <laughs> Well, I you can always tell who Mel Brooks is like a movie, you know, when he makes. Oh yeah, games, it's like oh, there's Mel. <laughs> and and here's a weird uh, thing that I learned, and I once again I'm going to give credit to the Nerdist podcast that in Young Frankenstein, Gene Wilder only agreed to be in Young Frankenstein if Mel Brooks didn't act in it. Hmm. That was one of his stipulations to act in the movie, and that kind of, in my opinion, that kind of paints Gene Wilder in a bit of a dick, right? A dick position. When I was watching Liz and Dick, uh-huh. <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> 
I didn't know much about Elizabeth Taylor. You just knew, like, the divorces and what a diva, whatever, mm-hmm. and all her diamonds. She was kind of a bitch, and she was, um, D- Dick would get, or Richard would get all these uh, job offers. Mm-hmm. And a few times, Sophia Loren was supposed to be the female, and then she say, well, no, I don't want that. I'm going to play that person. So I felt bad for Sophia Loren. Looks like she lost a couple of gigs because of... Of Liz, Liz Taylor? Liz Taylor. I was like, wow. what a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you jealous bitch. Because it happened like a couple times in the movie, so I'm wondering, like, how many roles did <laughs> did Sophia Loren get screwed out of because of her? Yeah, we're going to be like, years from now, you know there's going to be like the Britney Spears movie. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I am so excited for, um like, the tell-all. The Christina Britney, Aguilera Christina Aguilera, movie. Britney Spears, like, what really went like out? Like, the rivalry should... between them two. Yeah, and, and like, the like... cattiness, the drugs, the, the orgies. The Mickey Mouse Club Like, the days. real shit that really happened. <laughs> I cannot wait. Please, just release it now. I won't judge you. <laughs> Well, um, like I mentioned before with the Robert Pattinson. What about our now, dads? Being, you know, uh, <laughs> right you now with the him? new Star Wars movies, mm-hmm. there are a million and one uh, rumors going around. They haven't cast it? They haven't cast it because they haven't uh, even, they're still like writing it. Kinda, yeah. I think they kind of have An a idea. bare bones skeleton of where they're going to go with it, but um, they've gotten writers. You think writers. our cats would do it? I don't think he'd the be good The rumor that. was that. I can't see him really doing that. That our pets was going to have. Of course, like I said, right now there are a million rumors right, yeah. flying out. Now, of course, Star Wars fans are going ape shit. They yeah, I can't not... see him. He's more like Twilight, yeah, <laughs> like that was... romantic. So I can't see him doing when. Yeah, when like, George uh... Lucas was doing his prequels, there was a, a rumor for a week that like in sync were going to be in it. Yes, uh, because <laughs> see, I can't. That's totally. That's just but a parody. Because George had. Lucas's daughter at the time oh, okay, well, was a, uh, and I think it. I, I think it's like his uh, adopted daughter, but you know, raising her. She was an NSYNC fan. And the Don't ever listen to your adopted kids. They were going to be in the movie as Jedis. That would have been... Because now it's just like a parody, like a scary movie yeah, well, type thing. You know, in scary the movies, movie too. Uh, in, in particular, I think the movie was going to be Attack of the Clones. There is a scene where there's like 50 Jedis on the screen. Mm, and they're, they're like bum rushing a stadium. Yeah. And so just gonna to have <laughs> like NSYNC in there zoom in on them, like, wouldn't have been bye, that Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Attack <laughs> It would have been cheesy, though. So Thank God he didn't do it, right? There was a brief rumor right now that Robert Pattinson and, you know... I can't see him in that role, but if he, he could was, pull it off, that would be cool. He was technically in Harry Potter. Yeah, he, he was, was in, in the Harry Goblet Potter. Goblet of Fire, I believe it was. Yep. Uh, so, God, Harry Potter, Twilight, and let's just say he gets Star Wars. Like, every major, major. fucking uh, adventure uh, series. He's really cov- covered all, like, those, <laughs> that you genre. Know, what's next? He's going to be, like, in the next Hobbit movie. Right, like, <laughs> did you see the previews for it? The Hobbit, Hobbit? Yeah, it looks, it looks fucking cool. awesome. I loved all three of the As uh, Lord of the not Lord into movies. all of that stuff, it looked cool. It looked like yeah. a movie I would go see. I saw part one, and I, you know, I saw part one, and I was like, okay, it's it's a good movie. Part two really, like, ups the ante and really gets you involved. And by the time, seeing part three makes you appreciate part one more. Okay, you know, well, it uh, ties it all in together. Because what had happened was, um, when I saw The, the Return of the King... By that time, The Fellowship of the Ring, the first one, was on cable. So I watched Return of the King, which was a great fucking movie. And then, like, I went home and The Fellowship of the Ring was on. You know, like, when they always Chris, tie what in. what did I say about getting a hobby, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> and then I went in. This oh, is my cool. hobby. Oh, no, no, yeah, so that's cool. The Hobbit's my hobby. Uh, but <laughs> I'm really into Hobbit. Reading, you know, seeing part one after seeing part three. Like, kind of, yeah. They really yeah. appreciate it. And so, I mean, uh, you know, the Lord of the Ring movies, I love. Those now, were the, huge, apparently, yeah. I, and I've sold all my copies on eBay. Oh, no. Because I had, like, the Walmart uh, copies. But I'm going to, you know, my hope is, you know, make some money and I'll buy them on Blu ray. I'll, like, I have, like, the yeah. ultimate Blu ray. Because all these movies have been released with the extra shit. Extras and commentaries. Because there are, there are, um, there's the version they put out in the theaters, which were long enough as it is. Right, and then but there the, are the full where they recorded everything or something. Yeah, they recorded like everything from the book. So I would I would only imagine watching all four, all three of those movies in a row before even The Hobbit comes out. You would easily spend about ten to eleven hours. I was gonna say that's like a full day. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna be like oh you know here's five hours. It's you're done for the it's day. You're long. out of commission. Yeah. Don't, Nobody can know. contact you. Strap a, a pee bag on. Yeah, you're sitting there and you're watching it. 
Yeah, so if Robert Pattinson makes it into Star Wars, like I said, a lot of Star Wars fans would be pissed off. <laughs> There's going to be an outrage. Who yeah. would you like to see in it? I don't know. I, I'm i hoping and anticipating because everyone's like, oh, we have to find out what happens with Han Solo and Princess Leia. I know it's going to sound weird. I don't want it to be about Han Solo and Princess Leia and Luke. I want it. The prequels were kind of 30 years in the past. Mm-hmm. I want this to jump at least 30 years in the future. Where you can, I guess, you can call back or you can say, okay, you know, you hear, oh, when Princess Leia and yeah, Han Solo like got married. Like as much as I'm a fan, I'm anticipating, I want a whole new arc. New thing, yeah. Of course, yeah, it has to have something to, to do with Darth Vader because the first three movies is about the kid growing up becoming Darth Vader. Then the, th- the original trilogy was about Darth Vader being evil, but his son brings the good out of him, redeems him. So the third one kind of has to be about Darth Vader or his legacy or, you know, uh, you know, maybe his son falling the way he fell. So mm-hmm. Like, you know, like it was only uh, a matter of time or something like Before, that. I'm getting yeah. real geeky. But it's, I don't want Third it to alert. be, okay, after, after the Return of the Jedi, after the sixth movie, you know, let's follow them up further. I don't want that. I, you know, and I know that's what a lot of fans do want. want but, yeah. you know, I'm anticipating a whole new uh, mythology. You know, of course, you know, and Mark Hamill, the guy who played Luke Skywalker, can mm-hmm. come back right now because it's been 30 years. Yeah. So he can. So he literally. They don't even need to put makeup <laughs> he on He aged him. with the movie. Yeah. yeah. They can, you know, <laughs> uh, that would be awesome. Um, now I am now not part seven, part eight and part nine are going to be written by Lawrence Kasdan. Now, mm-hmm. now, and just Lawrence Kasdan was like George Lucas's right hand man and actually had more of a say in the second movie, Empire Strikes Back. Okay. 99.9% of Star Wars fans say that Empire Strikes Back was the best movie of all, all time. So seeing oh, that he has a hand for the in second, eight, and nine, eight, nine, I'm like, Bonner. yeah, Lawrence Kasdan. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, so now there was another, oh, and I forgot the guy's name. Like George Lucas is like, you know, if you want to say the top three, the other guy didn't, he didn't come along with Lucasfilm with Disney. Like he wasn't did. part of the deal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I believe he's made he's like, hey, if Disney wants to work with me, they can right. work with me, but they haven't contacted like there's him. No... I, uh, the guy that actually, um, Robert McCollum, that's his name. Robert McCollum, uh, didn't come along with the deal, which I mean, I guess you can't sell people, but mm-hmm. like they, I guess Disney didn't renew his contract or whatever for wah, their wah. purchase. So that kind of bums me out a little bit, but you know, I, I, there's so much, there's so much focus on this that Disney's not going to fuck it up. You know what I'm saying? Disney right. can make family friendly action. Yes. Yeah. You know, I could totally see. You know, let it. I don't mind. Let it be PG. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be awesome. Now, do you think NSYNC is gonna be in this one? <laughs> <laughs> well, now that George Lucas has Justin nothing Timberlake to do with it, is gonna be in this one. That would be uh, <laughs> uh, One Direction or Justin Bieber. And and keeping uh keeping with Disney still on the mind. Uh, in a few episodes, I'm gonna I'm be hanging going out to Disney. be interview uh, interviewing this uh, gentleman by the name of George Kerstick. Um, now here's a guy who's actually he's worked for he's worked for Disney because cool. he was a writer on the show The Clone Wars, which is on Cartoon Network right now. Um, and so he's and he was also uh, a, a supporting writer in this show called Motor City. Oh, you love now, that I've, I've show, mentioned that before, yeah. Motor City, and unfortunately, yeah. Motor City has been canceled. Why? Because you mentioned it. <laughs> I of the hope. curse the of two two on podcast. Curse. We I'm don't sorry, even affect George. couples. Now we are affecting. <laughs> now we're getting shows canceled. Oh my god, we're sorry, Motor City. We are <laughs> sorry. So we think we're doing good. He's worked for Disney mm-hmm. with Motor City, and he's also worked for Lucasfilm when he was writing for the Clone Wars. Okay. So he's he's worked for both ends. So I'm definitely. I'm. Definitely That'll be cool to interview him and be like, "Yeah, his." Know, a, work, which... I'll be interviewing him in about a week. So mm-hmm. you know, we just got off uh, Mike and Ming, and and yep. and now George now Kirstick, we're just interviewing and, people. Yeah, you know, we're 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 building up our stable of. Call us for you know, an interview. Five and, five five. And I have to say, I've Sexy. been I've been goofing around with him online and going back and forth with stuff, and he is such a cool guy. He is such a cool guy, and he's trying to bring back this cartoon Megas XLR. Yeah, I don't. Uh, for, I don't know that stuff. Yeah, it's a, Sorry. it's a cartoon about a giant robot from the future, but then yeah. it comes back into the past. Actually, it comes back. It comes back in the 1930s. It crashes. Um, then in our age, 
uh, this hot rodder guy finds this giant robot in a junkyard. Based on a true story? Based on a true story! <laughs> this is a documentary. Typical. And, um, so he, uh, so he's trying to he bring soups back. it up, but he's like a hot rod guy, so he takes the robot and makes it almost like a hot rod, and hot he paints rods. flames on it, and he... Hot he, rod robot. He takes the head, you know, the head of the robot got knocked off. So it's a car, So he right? installs his car. Yeah. So his car is the head of the robot. It's a... It's such an awesome, it's an awesome concept for a cartoon. You should see his and face. It, it He's so excited <laughs> talking about. So, and he wants and to like, bring it back. And the head is a car, you guys. Yeah, I got a <laughs> big goofy it. Kool-Aid smile on my face because I love the oh, show so yeah. much. And it only lasted two seasons. Okay, and he's so trying, he's trying to bring to, it back. And, is he trying to like reamp it and bring it back? Or? Yeah, it's it's because Cartoon Network. Should we even be talking about it? Because that might blow his chances. No, he um, <laughs> he spoke about might... it. There was this other podcast called the Tsunami <laughs> Faithful. Yeah, but I don't want to like jinx them. Oh you know, yeah, the first, the two strangers <laughs> one podcast. It. The two strangers one podcast. We're just gonna have first. episodes where we just don't even talk because we don't want to curse anyone. <laughs> I'm just gonna talk about oh, stuff I don't yeah, like. Yeah, we gotta. We're still, you know. I think if we cursed, we Motor keep City, talking about Kardashians and. <laughs> Nothing is Nothing. happening. I think if, since we cursed Motor City, hopefully yeah. it's See? already affected yeah. him. Yeah, okay. So it's know. a one-time so, deal. Yeah. He's already then been it's, affected it's, once and it won't get affected again. You know, everything is better after that. We only get you one time and then <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, so um, they're thinking about, they're trying to get the original episodes out on DVD. Oh, cool. If they could bring it back, um, you know, see if other people want to pick it up. Mm-hmm. So, um, we'll be interviewing him. I don't well, know. I'll be interviewing him. Um, Saturday, I mean, if yeah. you would like. I'm actually on a wine tour that day for a bachelorette party. When you said oh, okay. date, I was like, I can't miss that. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I already paid. So. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I mean, I would like for you to be here. Yeah. Um, but I you'd, know good you'd be sitting there like, Yeah, I wouldn't know much to um, say. I'd ruin it. Clone Wars, <laughs> yeah. Make Us XLR, Motor yeah. City. It's, Let me tell you about Lindsay. It's and, the uh, nerdy part, yeah. <laughs> um, did you hear? CW is now, I don't know if they wrote the scripts or what, but they're going to be doing a prequel series to Wonder Woman. Wow. They haven't casted it yet because NBC, you know, didn't pick up mm-hmm. uh, that other one that they were doing, just Wonder Woman. So mm-hmm. they, I guess, jumped on it and were like, we're going to do a prequel well, right now they're doing Arrow. Uh, CW yeah. has that Arrow yeah. show. Now, I haven't watched it, and I, you know, being a nerd, a comic book nerd, I should support it. But I just, I knew I wasn't going to get into it, and unfortunately, has it, I, is it canceled? I, has it done well? No, no, it's still. I, all my friends are giving me the same. Like it's okay. But, you yeah. know, now the character is Green Arrow, mm-hmm. and they call the Arrow, I guess, to be a little bit more appealing with, like, teenagers, like, maybe get some Katniss, you know, uh, Hunger Games fans into it or something like that. You know, yeah. this has yeah. been the summer of the bow and arrow, you know, right. between Hunger uh, Games, the Avengers, Did you hear, and, and yesterday, I believe it was, because I haven't heard of anybody being killed with an arrow, bow and arrow, except for mm-hmm. on the movies here with Hunger Games. So uh-huh. this kid, Chris Crum... Uh-huh. Um, now I don't remember where it was, but it wasn't here in New York. It was, I think, Midwest. I don't remember. Uh-huh. Um, stabbed his dad's girlfriend, okay? Mm-hmm. And then his dad is a professor at Casper College. Then he went to the school, shot his dad in the head with a bow and arrow. Holy shit. And then stabbed his dad and then stabbed himself. Why do you have a bow and arrow? Like, <laughs> yeah. This is traveled? the summer yeah. of the bow and arrow. Like, did you think you were Katniss? Like, wh- yeah. yeah. So I, mean, I don't know what was going on there, but mm-hmm. brought a bow. First of all, yeah. how did you get into the school with the bow and arrow? Somebody must have saw you in the well, it's hall. It's one of those. Um, you can't just be walking around with a bow it, and arrow. It can't be New York. It's got to no, be, no, it like, be down south. I want to say like Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Let me see. If it'll have a it like, down yeah, south, it was like, like people like, you know, you can carry your weapon right. on your waist and stuff like that. Like he went to a college with a bow and arrow. And, like, the students were all in there. Mm-hmm. And just, whatever. And it would, depending on the school, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a big um, thing. Because what if the school had some sort of field or some sort yeah. of, you know, area like where stuff like yeah. that's done? Because obviously, like, it was overlooked. Somebody's walking around with... Yeah. So. And it's totally legal. There is no... It is not illegal at all to carry a bone. Oh, arrow. yeah, that's And not, you could be a 15-year-old with a bone. I mean, I'm just... Oh, it was in Vernon, Connecticut. Connecticut. Oh, shit, up north. Yeah. What is going on in the world? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... What I'm saying is that if you're no go- cop in the world can stop you from carrying yeah. a bow and arrow. It's not a... I believe the technical term is a danger, dangerous instrument and not a deadly weapon. Well, it's clearly used as well. Well, obviously, yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, no, it's yeah, a hunting you can carry, tool and yeah. stuff like that. 
But so, um, yeah, so I guess he just walked in and just doesn't wow. say why, and then stabbed himself. And when the police killed himself or just stabbed yep, himself, because when the police arrived, he was already dead. Oh, okay. So killed himself. In the so house. murder suicide. Wow. And did you hear about the other mur- murder the, suicide? The, the one, Kansas um, City the Kansas Chiefs. City Chiefs. And I know um, he's originally from uh, Long Island. Oh, is he? I didn't know anything. Yeah, about he was. Uh, I don't it know was if a it's big deal in Long Yoha Island. Yohan or Yovan? It's J O V A N. I don't or Jovan. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's Javon. Javon Belcher. Yeah, he killed his girlfriend. Then he went to the. And then he went stadium, to the stadium, and they were like, like, you know, stop. The manager for the team. Yeah, and just uh, he was making. He was obviously making some sort of point. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we'll ever find out what it was, but right. when you kill yourself at, at work, like you kill your the, uh, the mother of his kids and himself, like. Right, it was. You know, the, he was made. He, he, there was some sort of statement. I mean, obviously things probably weren't good in the relationship. Right. And, that's just scary because, like, some of the teammates responded with, like, you know, we didn't know anything was going on. Yeah. And that's, you know? And that's usually what happens. Nobody, you know, noticed anything different with them and then maybe just snapped. Who knows yeah. what happened? Uh, but then I guess Kansas City won yesterday and it was pretty emotional. Yeah. They, they, they decided there was a they were tough decision play. whether they were going to play or not. They decided to play. Um, well, but that's cool that they won. Like, that's kind of a cool victory, you know, after going through a tragedy. But yeah, it's very I sad. I don't know what was going, what's going on. Where it'll it'll come out. It'll definitely come out because that between was between that other kid and those him. are crimes of passion when you kill yourself and right. kill your significant other and the mother of your kids I mean, and stuff like that. If you're really gonna go all through, just kill yourself. Just kill yourself. Why yourself? Yeah, no, I totally other agree people with you. In, you know. Yeah. But you know, yeah, if you're so kill yourself, yeah. I mean, you know. Uh, so if you're just gonna do that in the end, just do it to yourself. Yeah, he's he's from Long Island. I want to say. Uh, <laughs> really, New York's really representing. Yeah, and North oh North my God! North now this past weekend, um, you know, coming back from New York City and being a person of Puerto Rican descent, um, Chris, you're Puerto Rican. <laughs> Hector Macho Camacho's yes. funeral. He got they shot were, in Puerto Rico, right? He got Is shot in happened? Puerto Rico. And I think it hit him in the head or something kind of vital. Yeah, he was on life support. Yeah. And they decided to pull the plug. Right. And he, the ceremony was in New York City. Okay. And they had a horse-drawn carriage. And I, I mean, that, honestly, cool. I feel that's a little, that's a little much. Like, Chris. when I think of, when I see the horse-drawn carriage, it reminds me of Keep it up, Aaliyah's. Chris. You're not getting anything for yours. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, we're gonna say that's too much. That's too man. much. <laughs> you want? I'll. Do Jeez, the I whole... want a parade. I want a parade and I want a party. I, uh, okay, Ness says you write I'm that down. I'm dead. First. I'm a fucking piece of meat. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'll feed you to the wolves. Uh, look, I'll dig the hole now. So all you gotta do is cover <laughs> me up. Don't even put me in a box. I don't. <laughs> all this extra ceremony is to me. It, it's useless. It's it's it's. I mean, it's no, I want living. people crying at but mine. <laughs> to have you like the white horses and a horse drawn carriage. Yeah. It's like, so, because what that reminds me of, Aaliyah's funeral. Aaliyah, oh, yeah. and she died like in August or something like that of 2001. And there was all this big deal about Aaliyah being dead. And then like a week later is 9-11. Right. So like it really puts things in perspective. Yeah, a, like, a, a, oh. a marginally successful mm. singer had this big elaborate funeral. And then, you know, this the happened. biggest big attack tragedy. on American soil. So, you know, it puts things in perspective. And, you know, Macho Camacho, now... Oh, Spanish Harlem, and maybe because the news didn't make it up here, because up here in Rochester, but Spanish Harlem, the Upper East Side of Manhattan, which mm. is a predominantly Hispanic area, oh, yeah. was going fucking ape shit. Oh there yeah, was, there were and there were fights at the wake, and, just, and you know, you know like, everybody enjoy it, like you know, everybody celebrate. Why do we gotta get in fights? Yeah, there, there were fights at the wake. Like, everybody's um, gonna act up. And, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's one of those things where goddamn stereotypes really come in. People were eating rice and beans. <laughs> I do love they rice got and into beans. The fight. And look, rice and beans were thrown everywhere. I am 100% Puerto Rican, and it's like you know. This is the reason I why they're stereotypes. Oh, come on, people! You're eating rice and beans and getting into fights at a fucking wake. Come on! And, like, Can we all just get along? Like this really... is a wake. Why do we got to start a fight? Like what was the fight over? Somebody um, took your rice and beans. <laughs> What happened? It was women. It was two women, See, if I'm not like, mistaken. But then, let's you just know. get along. You know, fight after the ceremony. Yeah, and Spanish Harlem, Spanish Harlem, let's say in the Upper East Side, was like, you know, but I mean, there were like parties, but like, you know, people driving and like, what's the word? Uh, convoys, you know, like oh, car okay. after car, and yeah. honking their horn. And it was a big deal. Traffic is bad night. enough. And yeah. now we got this. <laughs> On Saturday night. And then, uh, yeah. coincidentally, was the Miguel Cotto fight and Miguel Cotto was also, who's also a, a famous Puerto Rican, lost the fight. Oh, come on. on. Saturday couldn't represent. Against, uh, what's his name? His, I know his last Tyson. name was Trout, uh, <laughs> the black guy. 
Um, Mike Tyson. No. <laughs> Holyfield. Uh, no, oh, his, no, his last name was Trout. I forgot the first name. Fish. Justin Trout. Or I don't know. Well, yeah. Bass. So, <laughs> you know, if you're Puerto Rican, this weekend was kind of hard on you. <laughs> Cotto <laughs> lost the fight. Weekend. Camacho is is in the ground. So you guys still got Pitbull. Uh, oh. <laughs> and Dale, Chris, what Dale. I learned what I learned from uh, Chelsea lately, he's Cuban. Oh, that true. Yeah. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, because you don't even. Have you, know, the, the, <laughs> not, you know, he makes. Uh, you know. Reggaeton, sorry, I'm just reggaeton sorry. music, <laughs> you know, which is, you know. Sorry, you actually don't have people. was a Puerto Rican, uh, you know, Puerto, not that I say Puerto Rican. You got uh, Ricky Martin. Reggaeton. You got oh, Ricky Martin. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you so, go. And Gloria Estefan. She's no, Cuban, she's though. she's Cuban. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because we're losing all our... People. Okay, I guess you guys just got Ricky Martin. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. And, oh my God, and it was so I've funny. I've heard more diva shit about her recently. When I was in my buddy Eddie's house, Eddie's Puerto Rican, his wife's Puerto Rican, and she was like, what, you know, was we were talking about the Camacho fight, Camacho dying and the Cotto fight. And she goes, what the fuck has Jenny done for the block? You exactly. Because like, you know, Jen- you know, it's not like she's coming back and doing anything. Right. You know, I was so, even know. for that Fiat commercial she had to do, it, it was. It was fake. It was fake. Like she didn't go to the Bronx. It was in Hollywood over I'm there. I'm still driving Like you have to go do block. a commercial where it's talking about where you grew up and you can't go over there. Yeah. You lazy. You lazy. I was so Can mad when she won like the most, I don't remember what it was, hottest or most successful or most Fortune 500 there. Mm-hmm. She was like one of the top. I was like, "What have you done?" I'm still, stu- I'm still driving by the block. <laughs> you, 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 yeah, you don't do anything. You just, you were the host or the judge there. Like, what? I'm just mad that she's, you know, making yeah. that much. That's what I'm pissed. <laughs> yeah, I'm pissed and I'm speechless. You're using, you're using. Oh, you got Mario Lopez. He's Puerto Rican. Lopez. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so ignorant. <laughs> There I think many, so, no? There are many shades. I don't think, I think, I wouldn't, I don't know what he is, but I think he's... His even, dimples. I don't know. Um, he I actually got nice married. Skin, I think. Honestly, I think he, I think his Spanish roots come from... Let's see. Mexico. Mario Lopez heritage. Uh, he got married the, I guess over the weekend. Mm-hmm. So, sorry. Oh. Sorry, say by the Bell fans. <laughs> um, yeah. let's see. Mario oh, Lopez Puerto, heritage. My Puerto Rican. I'm gonna be the pillar in the Puerto Rican community. Oh, no, you have Ricky Martin. You have to beat Ricky Martin. <laughs> I have to beat. What about Enrique Iglesias? Um, once again, I think he's. <laughs> <laughs> we just We're a one. small island, you know. Uh, <laughs> gotta love it. All right. So while you look up who Mario, <laughs> where Mario Lopez is, just as Hispanic. Just as Hispanic. Yeah, he's one. I think he's like half and half, and two. I think mm. his roots come from Puerto Rico. I mean, uh, from Mexico. All right. <laughs> yeah, it says Mexican something. Sorry, you don't even have him. And to anybody, for all the people listening, yes, they, you know, there are more than just Mexicans. Whenever they think that's whenever, not true. <laughs> whenever these people, uh, you know, when you mention Hispanic, I know they just they think automatically um, go to Mexican. When I live in we're Pennsylvania, so people are like, "Oh, you're Mexican? No, there's <laughs> so you Puerto might be Rico, Mexican, there's right? Dominican Republic. Where there's... in Mexico did you grow up, Chris? <laughs> There's a whole continent in South America. We're you know, so stupid. Brazil and Colombia and, and Paraguay and Argentina and, and Ecuador and, and Mexico and, and there's a million countries. I know. <laughs> Everyone goes, oh, you're Mexican. So where'd you grow up, Cancun? You know, I love it. <laughs> All right, so let's get our plugs out of the way, please. Let's get a <gasps> plug on, yo. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast, where you can find links to all things show related. First and foremost, there's our eBay page, where all your purchases and money goes to support the show. We're selling comic books, heavy oh. metal, video games, DVDs about video games, DVDs about comic books. It's all over the place. <laughs> And like I said, I, I'm selling even other things. I'm probably going to be selling tools pretty soon. Um, Chris is going to sell his house, his bed. Chris is going to be yeah, sleeping outside. If there's if there's anything, if there's nothing up right now, keep coming back to Two Strangers One Podcast and check out the eBay page sell because there's brush, always stuff underwear. going on. Hey, look, somebody wants to buy my underwear. You can, I will more than happy right, sell it, it to you. You know. Um, any Get crazy on it, ladies. stalker fangirls out there, or fan guys? I don't even. I was buying my underwear. We don't right discriminate ahead. here. Yeah. I'd be flattered if I had a gay um, Ricky Martin fan. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bear. I'm at, the, yeah. I'm at the very least a bear. Yeah, give it up for Chris the you bear. Know what I'm saying, uh, you know, well, I mean, I'm He's not going to be selling but I would himself be for an you know, icon I'm in the bear community. Yeah. You could, or, be. or you know, uh, you know, I would be flattered if you know yeah. a big hairy bear. gay guy is like, you're cute. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, thank uh, you. <laughs> and thank you. You know, I want to see more pictures of you in your Spider-Man underwear. <laughs> um, okay, sure. <laughs> 
This is and so, so compromising. Yeah. I, I embrace my bear brothers. Um, so Grr. just keep checking out our <laughs> eBay page. Um, I'm also selling my book, Double Jackpot, which I gave copies to Mike and Ming when I went down. So hopefully, you know, I know Mike is like a big time reader, so he probably blasted through the book in, a, in the evening. You can purchase my book at doublejackpot.us. That's doublejackpot.us. Uh, soft cover is $15. A PDFL is five bucks. Um, Please like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash two strangers one podcast. Takes two seconds to share us. Um, and also after we did the show, like our numbers have tripled. Yes. Of, thank like, you. We love it. And I really want to thank all the love and support. Absolutely. Of the people who've coming out. Um, just our numbers just like skyrocketed. We Keep jumped up to back. 26 the other day in comedy on our website. On the, you know, our website is, we're under Podomatic, which has thousands and thousands of awesome. shows, and we jumped up to 26 in comedy, which Thank was you. awesome. And At least some people think we're funny. Welcome to all the new people that are, that are listening. Um, I think today was a pretty typical episode, as in like, you know, cross the gamut do. of yeah. comic books and pop culture and stuff like that. Um, so please keep coming back. Uh, if you want to continue to hearing, to hear, listen, episode, eh, where the hell are my tongue stuff? I think it's the medication is fucking up right, my tongue. Chris is fucked uh, up. <laughs> um, <laughs> the ways you can get our episodes. You can download the episodes off of two strangers, one podcast.com. So even if you have a cheap MP3 player and you want to listen to us while you're at work, or I think a lot of people, when I listen to podcasts, I'm usually driving or, mm-hmm. you know, commuting or somewhere. Um, so if you want to listen to us, you can, if you want to do it the most inexpensive way, download them off our episodes, off our pot, uh, uh, off our website and listen to them on your, if you have a cheapy MP3 player, or you could just download them to your smartphone. Um, if you have an iPhone, iPad, iPad mini, iPod, you can subscribe to us on iTunes. Just go to the iTunes store and upper right tab. There's podcasts search for two strangers, one podcast. You'll see our little red, white, and blue logo. It's going to come up Chris and Kristen's Two Strangers One podcast, but hey, there's only one. There's only one, goddammit. Holla. And um, for Android users, there's the Stitcher app, S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. Um, once again, I've dealt with these people a couple of times. They are so awesome and wonderful. They're the app that I use when I when I listen to podcasts. Um, oh boy, I'm sorry. Um, pretty much any podcast worth listening to. I mean, the two top, uh, podcasts, uh, were comedy. It was like Mark Marin, Adam Carolla, um, This American Life. Uh, well, that's not a comedy one, but, uh, all the major podcasts and of course the two that I love, you know, Kevin Smith and Chris Hardwick, you know, Smodcast and The Nerdist. Um, our West Coast brothers live in Lane. The Real Chat podcast, The Breakdown, The Fox Den, all of them are available. On the Stitcher app, so pretty much that's all you need. And I think there's a Stitcher app for iPhones also, but um, when you s- just favorite us and when you new episode comes out, boom, it's automatically on your phone. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, that's it. Please like us on Facebook, share us with your friends, tell them about the party we're having over here. We really appreciate it. And once again, thank you for all the love and 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 support. And people have been, you know, people who've just found out about our show because of. Um, Mike and Ming and Kevin Smith's Smod Coast Morning Show. And it's just been awesome. And just keep on listening because we got, we're not slowing down. We're not stopping for anything. This show is going to You can't keep, stop this train. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to keep, uh, thank you to our new listeners. From behind yeah. like the doggy style. Hey, yo. And we're going to hit it raw. Oh, we're going to hit we it go. hard. I mean, we're going to hit it raw. You're going to be walking. Now we took it to that level. You're going to, like, it's going to be the equivalent of walking bow-legged, but for your head. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to fuck gonna your ear pussy so hard. Right no. No. Oh, see, what's the case yeah. for our lady listeners? Yeah. For our lady listeners, we're going to look you in the eye. There you go. Yeah. We're going to say, I love you. Who's Kiss your neck. You? Kiss your lips. Baby, you're so sexy. And don't oh, worry God. about those sags. And don't worry about those stretch marks and those stray hairs. We love you anyway. <laughs> Hair on a nipple. That doesn't stop us. We still Hair love on you. the nipple. <laughs> Hair and, on the chest. A different story. <laughs> yeah. No, hair on the actual nipple. That's, uh, <laughs> it's happened. Yeah, uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Shave your nipples, girl. So, no, we, uh, we like Trim your, your nipple hair. Nipples. We love you. Don't change. Keep being sexy. And for our guy listeners... Keep we'll, being sexy. Well, <laughs> suck it raw. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to vomit now. 
fucking take it nice and good. Um, Here we I go. don't know where the Here we go, where Chris. Where the hell? We're trying to end this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I'm all hyped up. Okay. So we certainly hope you enjoyed listening to the show and had as much fun as we had recording it. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers in One Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Kristen. Don't be a stranger. See ya. Bye. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee. But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. Him punny. But... <laughs> <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure God. I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell, sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Well, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. <laughs> Christopher Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www. L-U-L-U dot com. That's Lulu dot com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, Lulu dot com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www dot Lulu dot com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15 and a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars is yeah. insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, come! I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I will and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. and You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.